Poetry builds health when the sense of loss is overwhelming in our lives. Here is Nathaniel Hawthorne. On one of the effects of reading poems. With poetry it was rather better. He delighted in the swell and substance of the rhythm and the happily recurring rhyme. Nor was Clifford incapable of feeling the sentiment of poetry, not, perhaps, where it was highest or deepest, but where it was most flitting and ethereal. It was impossible to foretell in what exquisite verse the awakening spell might lurk, but, on raising her eyes from the page to Clifford's face, Phoebe would be made aware, by the light breaking through it, that a more delicate intelligence than her own had caught a lambent flame from what she read. One glow of this kind, however, was often the precursor of gloom for many hours afterward, because, when the glow left him, he seemed conscious of a missing sense and power, and groped about for them, as if a blind man should go seeking his lost eyesight. Nathaniel Hawthorne, The House of the Seven Gables If one loses a sense of poetry because one has so much loss in life, then, as Epson shows, what remains is the antipoetry of one's missing dates. It is the poems you have lost, the ills from missing dates, at which the heart expires. Slowly the poison the whole blood stream fills. The waste remains, the waste remains and kills. William Epson. Such a loss of poetry, of what could have been, is one of Jane Austen's effects in her novel, Sense and Sensibility, where Eleanor becomes discombobulated. Eleanor advised her to lie down again, and for a moment she did so, but no attitude could give her ease. And in restless pain of mind and body she moved from one posture to another, till growing more and more hysterical, her sister could with difficulty keep her on the bed at all, and for some time was fearful of being constrained to call for assistance. Some lavender drops, however, which she was at length persuaded to take, were of use, and from that time till Mrs. Jennings returned, she continued on the bed quiet and motionless. I don't know if she fits the form of one of Nietzsche's last men, or last women in her case, but he obviously is sensitive to the power of chaos and despising, or not being able to despise oneself. I say unto you, one must still have chaos in oneself to be able to give birth to a dancing star. I say, unto you, you still have chaos in yourselves. Alas, the time is coming when man will no longer give birth to a star. Alas, the time of the most despicable man is coming, he that is no longer able to despise himself. Behold, I show you the last man. What is love? What is creation? What is longing? What is a star? thus asks the last man, and blinks. Nietzsche. Where Nietzsche is almost too sharp a thinker, his sensitivities remind me of a not very tolerant way of living, and if poetry is a remedy for loss, I myself would rather chose that, with the losses, than be intolerant of my neighbors. Angel Amy with me. O son of Telamon, thy country's pride. To Ajax thus the Trojan prince replied, Me, as a boy, or woman wouldst thou fright, new to the field, and trembling to the fight. The words of Hector, from Homer's Iliad, Book 7. Between of and Telamon the Elysian combines the sounds of the words in a colorful way to produce. The sound oft which stands for often a repetition. He repeated the same verse that evening when we parted. It will never be possible for me to forget that verse, indeed, I can more easily obliterate the recollection of his disappearance than the memory of that moment, just as the news of his disappearance disturbed me far less than his situation that first day. Soren Kierkegaard, Repetition In the section at the top from Homer, there is a good break between Telemann and thy by a comma. That is a break in the sentence's life, but not you and like to Hawthorne's Wakefield, who suddenly leaves his wife for years. 
Amid the seeming confusion of our mysterious world, individuals are so nicely adjusted to a system, and systems to one another, and to a whole, that, by stepping aside for a moment, a man exposes himself to a fearful risk of losing his place forever. Like Wakefield, he may become, as it were, the outcast of the universe. Hawthorne, Wakefield. There is a repetition in the sound of the T in Telemann, and the T in the word country. I think of repeating motifs, as in the egg and dart patterns which John Ruskin loved so much in his book, The Stones of Venice. Between countries and pride you have a SPR sound from that Alison, which reminds me of the word spring and its association with May. But when the house carrier, the snail, in early May, climbs up the plants from the earth to escape the Pleiades, then it is no longer the season for digging vineyards, but to wet your sickles and rouse up your slaves. Avoid shady seats and sleeping until dawn in the harvest season, when the sun scorches the body. Then be busy, and bring home your fruits, getting up early to make your livelihood sure. For dawn takes away a third part of your work, dawn advances a man on his journey, and advances him in his work, dawn which appears and sets many men on their road, and puts yokes on many oxen. Hesiod, the works and the days. In the name Ajax that sound of the X is a rare sound, TSKS and I think of rare things and animals. Like snowy owls. Another break in the action comes after boy with a comma. Earlier in the story of the Iliad, Homer writes about the break of Apollo's plague, in book one, which the priest, Chryses, got Apollo to bring its destruction because Chryses' daughter was abducted by the Greeks, and he desperately wished for her back. When Agamemnon refused him, Apollo brought about the plague to the Greeks. In the lying with woman and wouldst those two words repeat the W sound, and anaphora, another. Repetition like that egg and dart motif of Ruskin's heart. The word, new is a fine word in this phrase, especially when mixed with field it lends itself to the imagery of the newness of spring green, and other things new. Observe all this until the year is ended and you have nights and days of equal length, and earth, the mother of all, bears again her various fruit. Hesiod, the works and the days. Field matches the F sounds with fight, and this to me is a connection which alludes to wars being fought, literally and figuratively. Connections of the sort make me think first of Alfred North Whitehead. On matches. This character has the reality of nature, but we must not necessarily transfer natural time to extra natural entities. Two, for two minds, the discerned components of the general facts exhibited in their respective acts of sense awareness must be different. For each mind, in its awareness of nature is aware of a certain complex of related natural entities in their relations to the living body as a focus. Whitehead, the concept of nature. Finally, trembling is an effect of fear, so I return to the philosopher Kierkegaard to give a sense of that feeling. I starve myself into submission until I make the movement, for my eternal consciousness is my love. For God, and for me that is the highest of all, Kierkegaard, fear and trembling. Angel Kelly with me. Hercules is one who does not let much stand in the way of his own will. Straight away, weighed down as he was by his quiver and his lion's skin, he had thrown his club and his curved bow across to the other bank the hero said, let me endure the river since I have started to cross. He did not hesitate, and did not search for where the river was calmest, scorning to claim the water's allegiance. Ovid, Metamorphoses, Book 9. Here Hercules is brave against the dangers of the river, like Achilles on the river Scamander, which was also considered a god as well as a river. What does it mean to struggle with God as with a river? Enough has been said to prove that the gods exist and care for us, 
that they can be propitiated, or that they receive gifts, is not to be allowed or admitted for an instant. Let us proceed with the argument. Tell me, by the gods, I say, how the gods are to be propitiated by us. Are they not rulers, who may be compared to charioteers, pilots, perhaps generals, or physicians providing against the assaults of disease, husbandmen observing the perils of the seasons, shepherds watching their flocks? To whom shall we compare them? We acknowledge that the world is full both of good and evil, but having more of evil than of good. Plato, from Laws In a different tune, Moses would know what Plato could only question since Moses was a witness to a great power. Now the Lord said to Moses, Go up into this Mount Abram, and see the land which I have given to the children of Israel. Numbers 26 hours 12 minutes. If Plato was semi-critical over the evil in the world, I am thinking of a response in the book, The Great Gatsby. Whenever you feel like criticizing anyone he told me, just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the advantages that you've had. F. Scott Fitzgerald, The Great Gatsby. Wallace Stevens has had those advantages too, once, in his poem T. at the Palace of Hoon. Out of my mind the golden ointment rained, and my ears made the blowing hymns they heard. I was myself the compass of that sea. I was the world in which I walked, and what I saw, or heard or felt came not but from myself. And there I found myself more truly and more strange. Wallace Stevens, from T. at the Palace of Hoon. In this passage, D. H. Lawrence talks about the voice of a woman as strange and calling from her distance. He laughed at the fancy. Her voice was shrill and strange, calling from the distance. He watched her as she paddled away. There was something childlike about her, trustful and deferential, like a child. He watched her all the while, as she rowed. And to Gudrun it was a real delight, in make-belief, to be the childlike, clinging woman to the man who stood there on the quay, so good-looking and efficient in his white clothes, and moreover the most important man she knew at the moment. D. H. Lawrence, from Women in Love Thomas Mann's character Kretschmar thought that to sing well, the singer must have had a prior suffering in order to be his or her most musical. Ascetic, Kretschmar would say he replied, with ascetic chilling off. In that regard Father Beasil was quite authentic. Music always does prior penance for its sensual realization. The old Flemish masters inflicted music with the most confounded tricks, all to the glory of God, and it was a tough go. For it, considering all the highly unsensual and purely arithmetical stuff they devised, but then they let their penitential atonements sing, gave them over to the resonating breath of the human voice, which probably has the most bovine warmth of any sounding board imaginable Thomas Mann, from Dr. Faustus. In Francis Bacon's text of the New Atlantis, I wonder if there was a similar understanding of suffering on behalf of the son which merited his father to give his greatest jewel or if there was, unlike in Kretschmar's feelings before the gifts of song, just a love which brought out the father's blessing. Or both. God bless thee, my son, I will give thee the greatest jewel I have. For I will impart unto thee, for the love of God and men, a relation of the true state of Salomon's house. Son, to make you know the true state of Salomon's house, I will keep this order. First, I will set forth unto you the end of our foundation. Secondly, the preparations and instruments we have for our works. Thirdly, the several employments and functions whereto our fellows are assigned. And fourthly, the ordinances and rites which we observe. Francis Bacon, from New Atlantis. 
for the events of experience to be that high, in Bacon's New Atlantis, I consider that it would be equally high as in the state of a dream to have such a blessing by a father. This is what Sigmund Freud has to say about former experience revealing the source of the dream. The dreamer is therefore in the dark as to the source which the dream has tapped, and is even tempted to believe in an independent productive activity on the part of the dream, until, often long afterwards, a fresh episode restores the memory of that former experience, which had been given up for lost, and so reveals the source of the dream. One is therefore forced to admit that in the dream, something was known and remembered that cannot be remembered in the waking state. Sigmund Freud, from the interpretation of dreams. If what Freud is suggesting is that pain and suffering can be at the root of amazing dreams, as in the case of the understanding of Thomas Mann's character about voice and singing in general, then I look at the concept of need as the prior experience before its own satisfaction, whether in dream or in song. And because the Gnostic Valentinus relates the concept of need to the absence of the father, perhaps then Great dreams, experiences as well as the human voice and its song originate in that primal void of our yearning for the father. Since need came into being because the father was not known, when the father is known, from that moment on, need will no longer exist. Valentinus, from the Gospel of Truth. I see that as one alternative to any understanding of the essence of compensation and of restitution. That the Father, whether as a source of need, or Father on, our voices, the Father is as a memory in influence and provocation to higher experience. Angel honey with me. I have a line, the room steals our freedom in its carriage. To me, it means that whenever we are in a room, it is like a carriage we are in, and as long as we are in it, by nature of the surrounding walls we are confined there and less free. George Eliot has some fine things to say about being enclosed in space. She was glowing from her morning toilet as only healthful youth can glow, there was gem-like brightness on her coiled hair and in her hazel eyes, there was warm red life in her lips, her throat had a breathing whiteness above the differing white of the fur which itself seemed to wind about her neck and Cling down her blue-gray pelis with a tenderness gathered from her own, a sentient commingled innocence which kept its loveliness against the crystalline purity of the outdoor snow. As she laid the cameo cases on the table in the bow window, she unconsciously kept her hands on them, immediately absorbed in looking out on the still, white enclosure which made her visible world. George Eliot Middlemarch it is not unlike being in a room when in the mind of another. If another knows you, sometimes they do more than you. Or if they have a knowledge which concerns you, you may be less free from doubt. Until you talk with them, as here does Imogen wish to know some from Iachimo. You do seem to know something of me, or what concerns me, pray you dash. Since doubling things go ill often hurts more then to be sure they do, for certainties. Either are past remedies, or, timely knowing. The remedy then born discovered to me. What both you spur and stop. Imogen, from Cumberland by Shakespeare. In any way, does taking knowledge what others know count as robbery? If so, as with Falstaff and his horse, if one is a robber, one must have a getaway plan. I am accursed to rob in that thieves' company, the rascal hath removed my horse, and tied him I know. Not where. If I travel but four foot by the squire, further afoot, I shall break my wind. Well, I doubt. Not but to die a fair death for all this, if I. And hash thirty-nine, scape hanging for killing that rogue. I have. Forsworn his company hourly any time this two and twenty years, and yet I am bewitched with a rogue and hash thirty-nine, s company. If the rascal hath not given me 
medicines to make me love him, I and hash 39, LL be hanged, it. Could not be else, I have drunk medicines. Points? How? A plague upon you both. Bardolf. Peto. I and hash 39, LL starve air I and hash 39, LL rob a foot further. An and hash 39, 12. Not as good a deed as drink, to turn true man and to leave these rogues, I am the veriest varlet that ever chewed with a tooth. Eight yards of uneven ground is three score and ten miles afoot with me. And the stony hearted villains know it well enough. A plague upon it when thieves cannot be true one to another. They whistle. Phew. A plague upon you all. Give me my horse, you. Rogues, give me my horse, and be hanged. Falstaff, Henry the Fourth, Part One by Shakespeare. And, for robbing knowledge, that getaway plan seems to me to be a way out of some room by means of regaining one's freedom at any cost. Angel grouchy with me. I think of the winds of the sea, and the sun at dawn often. That there is any wind at all to be blowing. From the sea to the shore, and that from some horizon the sun peaks over, these present the scene I am. After. That is a time of comfort to me, a comfort which has to be found in all of its radiance, but only in a union of a temporary moment's spell. And we work to have comfort as well as the elements work. Somehow to bring us that comfort to be worked. And from the sea there rise, and from the sky. There fall, clear exhalations, soft and bright. Veil after veil, each hiding some delight which sun or moon or zephyr draw aside. Till the isle and hash thirty-nine, s beauty, like a naked bride. Glowing at once with love and loveliness. Blushes and trembles at its own excess. Percy by Shelley, Epipsychidion. Shelley's beauty is of the day, and Macbeth wants to conceal his deeds from the night. The stars appear. As greedy watch people for him. Stars, Hide your fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. The eye wink at the hand, yet let that be. Which the eye fears, when it is done, to see. Macbeth. If Macbeth must fear the night because can reveal can deeds, Walt Whitman on the other hand wants to. Have revealed the idea of death, of which the night is part symbol and substance. The elite nuances of. The watery waves bring him a knowledge of the afterlife. A word then, for I will conquer it. The word final, superior to all. Subtle, sent up, what is it, I listen. Are you whispering it, and have been all the time, you see waves? Is that it from your liquid rims and wet sands? Walt Whitman, out of the cradle endlessly rocking. And further on, Whitman is glad to receive that knowledge which his poem found. It comes in a delicious word, death which will unlock for him the meaning of the waves. And with them the key, the word up from the waves. The word of the sweetest song, and all songs. Walt Whitman, out of the cradle endlessly rocking. Moses, in the Bible, as here in the Talmud, speaks about him being so good that he could see death. God, face to face. Holy Writ testifies to the righteousness of Moses, and there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. The heavens wept and exclaimed, The pious one hath departed, there is none upright among men. From the Talmud. And if the heavens weep for Moses, it was to bring attention to the fact that he was good. As an antithetical instance of a different sort, that a person can will the body to do this or that needs not be an agent of good, but one of power quarried from that wool, says Friedrich Nietzsche. My idea is that every specific body strives to become master over all space, and to extend its force, its will to power, and to thrust back all that resists its extension. But it continually encounters similar 
efforts on the part of other bodies and ends by coming to an arrangement, union, with those of them that are sufficiently related to it, thus they then conspire together for power. And the process goes on. Frederick Nietzsche, the will to power. That the body can extend into a freedom as part of its meaning is part of its self-compositional nature. René Descartes is one who talks frequently about the power of extension from the things in the world into the memory and how that is a goodness, the ability to sense those measuring lengths coming back and forth into and out of the body, as in math. But I am in the habit of imagining many other things besides this corporeal nature which is the object of pure mathematics, to wit, the colors, sounds, scents, pain, and other such things, although less distinctly. And in Asmic, as I perceive these things much better through the senses, by the medium of which, and by the memory, they seem to have reached my imagination, I believe that, in order to examine them more conveniently, it is right that I should at the same time investigate the nature of sense perception, and that I should see if from the ideas which I apprehend by this mode of thought, which I call feeling, I cannot derive some certain proof of the existence of corporeal objects. René Descartes, Meditations to have objects become events is a bridge between time and space that can represent our need to learn names since without language we cannot have our way around the world as well. I will write immediately. Let me thank you for so considerately yielding to my disinclination. It may seem less unreasonable if I avow to you that although I don't know Mr. Lightwood, I have a disagreeable association connected with him. It is not his fault, he is not at all to blame for it, and does not even know. My name. Charles Dickens, our mutual friend. One can be accused of ignorance if one does not keep up with learning people's and things' names. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment, so they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out, with his hand grasping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was sixty years old when Rebecca gave birth to them. Genesis 25 24-6 And names have their meaning or else what good are they? Like in the poem Love Will Find a Way by Anonymous, one can learn the differing and sometimes incompatible names of love. You may esteem him a child for his might, or you may deem him a coward from his flight. But if she whom love doth honor be concealed ye from the day, set a thousand guards upon her, love will find out the way. From love will find a way by anonymous. A lover would not be a lover if he never made his love known. That recognition of love, by all, is part of his claim to be reputed as a lover. Angel honey with me. Life is but a dream. For Nietzsche a mighty forgetfulness accompanies life as in dreams. Forgetfulness is not just a vis inertiae, as superficial people believe, but is rather an active ability to suppress, positive. In the strongest sense of the word, to which we owe the fact that what we simply live through. Experience. Nietzsche, from the genealogy of morality, and, for Joyce that life is a dream does not help us know why some dreams are nightmares. Poor fellow. Quite a boy. Terrible. Really terrible. What dreams would he have, not seeing? Life a dream for him. Where is the justice being born that way? James Joyce, Ulysses. Freud might have thought death is a dream too, or nightmare for those dead who fight us off. We know that the dead are mighty rulers, we may be surprised to learn that they are regarded as enemies. Sigmund Freud, Totem and Taboo. And then there is the art of living. That art for art's sake expounded by Walter Pater, 
which Hamlet, I understand, saw as vast distances of thought. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Hamlet. Some fight for life, others don't, he didn't fight. Forward slash he hadn't fought at all. Elizabeth Bishop. From the fish. And, some think sleeping, as in dreaming about life, as what seems alive, but in fact, is not. They thought that she was fast asleep forward slash but she was dead with sorrow. William Allingham, from The Fairies. If life is a dream, then the literature which comes from it, and its art, are part of its interpretive record. The term more than rational appeals to me from my spiritual side, but it also occurs as a more than logical theme in science. If we were logical, the future would be bleak, indeed. But we are more than logical. We are human beings, and we have faith, and we have hope, and we can work. Jacques Cousteau Richard Feynman liked to speak of reality more important than the human. For a successful technology, reality must take precedence over public relations, for nature cannot be fooled. Richard Feynman But, I see the human as our priority. Stephen Hawking speaks of the human too, which comes before. Even beauty. Most sets of values would give rise to universes that, although they might be very beautiful, would contain no one able to wonder at that beauty. Stephen Hawking As does Louis Pasteur Science knows no country, because knowledge belongs to humanity, and is the torch which illuminates the world. Louis Pasteur With Hawking, he is somewhat pessimistic because he sees intelligence as something that might take over the imagination. We only have to look at ourselves to see how intelligent life might develop into something we wouldn't want to meet. Stephen Hawking And, Stephen Jay Gould thinks that humans are the best at science. Science is not a heartless pursuit of objective information. It is a creative human activity, its geniuses. Acting more as artists than as information processors. Stephen Jay Gould For me, the heartfulness of science can also come from whatever guides the scientist towards helping. Humanity thrive, and sometimes that help I would say is from the divine. Angel honey with me. For a video I am making for YouTube, a little speech. Recontextualizing the Kira synthesizer, a personal synthesis. I recognize the word synthesizer mostly from the philosopher Hegel, who uses it in part of his triad of the progress of the thought of the zeitgeist, the spirit of the times. Hegel's free artists of themselves who are Shakespeare's Cleopatra, Iago, Falstaff and Hamlet. Perhaps the meaning of Kira is beautiful girl in Greek, so that would be, from Hegel's foursome. Cleopatra, who is a beautiful woman in Shakespeare's play Antony and Cleopatra. But, a beautiful girl is a part of the poem, Blue Girls by John Crow Ransom, for I could tell you her story which is true. I know a lady with a terrible tongue. Blear eyes fallen from blue. All her perfections tarnished, yet it is not long. Since she was lovelier than any of you. Now looking at the synthesizer, you come to the control panel, and since to control suggests to will. Then to use the control panel on the Kira is to do what the philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche spoke of in his book, The Will to Power, where he says. 611. Thought is the strongest and most persistently exercised function in all stages of life, and also in every act of perception or apparent experience. Obviously it soon becomes the mightiest and most exacting of all functions, and in time tyrannizes over other powers. Ultimately it becomes passion in itself. On the control panel is the display screen. And, Harold Bloom warns us that the screen, computer, Screen, movie screen, smartphone screen, presents a danger to deep reading. Therefore, I will move. On to the controls. 
The rotary control has the word rotary which can mean turn, but I also imagine that it connects to the word rot where in Shakespeare's as you like it, Jax says and so, from hour to hour, we ripe. And ripe forward slash and then, from hour to hour, we rot and rot. The system controls have system as the name, so that word will connect to the poet, William. Blake's, I must create a system, or be enslaved by another man's. The page buttons connect to Shakespeare's Love's Labor's Lost, where there is a page boy, who helps. To sing the two songs at the close of the play. The cursor buttons can be imaginatively connected with cursing as in God's curses upon people at the end of Deuteronomy if they do not follow the codes. The exit button can connect to any stage directions of a play of Shakespeare's, but the one I like most is exit perused by a bear in the winter's tale. The edit buttons remind me of the trade of William Blake's as a printer's devil a proofreader. The undo buttons can link to Sigmund Freud's concept of the defense mechanism of undoing where somebody undoes a past event or emotion by means of this defense. The store button brings to my mind the idea of pigeon hurling, which is what Richard Rorty says. Philosophers do with their knowledge. The shift lock button connects to Walt Whitman's chant, unscrew the locks from the doors. The navigation controls imply the action of sailing, which if it was not a great part of Moby Dick, then the crew never would have hunted the whale because they would have stayed on land. The multi-buttons remind me of the button molder of Pierre G.Y.N.T., who will meet him at the crossroads. The part buttons also remind me of Walt Whitman's A Part and Parcel of God. The bank buttons connect to river banks, as in that beautiful poem by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, called A Musical Instrument. The patch buttons connect to the poem by Walt Whitman called Crossing Brooklyn Ferry, where he says in section 6, it is not upon you alone the dark patches fall. The dark threw its patches down upon me also. The best I had done seemed e to me blank and suspicious, comma. The transpose buttons remind me of trances, as in Shakespeare's The Tempest, with Ferdinand. Brought on by Prospero. In the oscillator section the word oscillator, which basically means to turn off and on, the on here. Could connect to William Allingham's poem, The Fairies High on the Hilltop the Old King Sits and the off may connect to and they are off as in a horse race. The voice oscillator buttons connect to Walt Whitman's poem, Song of Myself, where in section 5. Whitman says, I believe in you my soul, the other I am must not abase itself to you. And you must not be abased to the other. Loaf with me on the grass, loose the stop from your throat. Not words, not music or rhyme I want, not custom or lecture, not even the best. Only the lull I like, the hum of your valved voice. In the wave mode I recollect the waves again of Walt Whitman, as in Out of the Cradle Endlessly. Rocking, where the waves on the shore continually whisper the low and delicious word death to Whitman as a boy. The hypersaw mode makes me think of sores, but that connects to the verb to see from its past. Tense, as here in Percy by Shelley's poem, the two spirits I see the light, and I hear the sound. The filter section and its selection buttons bring me back to Whitman once more, where he will be. The filter and fiber of your blood at the close of Song of Myself. The envelope generator section makes me think of the generations as the falling leaves, Homer's metaphor for the coming and going of descendants. The amp and auxiliary e.g. select buttons could refer to Prince Hamlet's famous to be or not to be speech, where he brings up the great pitch which could go with amplitude. The LFO buttons connect to Ralph Waldo Elysian's novel, Invisible Man, where at its close the Narrator says he speaks to you on lower frequencies. The mod matrix brings to my mind that part of Hart Crane's poem, The Broken Tower, where the matrix of the heart lift down the eye. And the effects section with its effects select buttons and controls makes me think of the poem Castaway by William Cowper, 
where at its end, he says, no voice divine the storm allayed. No light propitious shone. When, snatched from all effectual aid, we perished, each alone. But I beneath a rougher sea, and whelmed in deeper gulfs than he. With arpeggiator section I think of the action of going up and down, the scales, so this reminds me of the anonymous poem's title of Gay Go Up and Gay Go Down, to ring the bells of London Town. Finally, the system configuration with its system edit, makes me think of that passage in William. Blake, I must create a system, or be enslaved by another man's. Angel Teresa with me. Wallace Stevens, in the idea of order, at Key West speaks about a woman's own human happiness in contrast with the inhuman cry of the sea. And yet its mimic motion forward slash made constant cry, caused constantly a cry forward slash that was not ours although we understood, forward slash inhuman, of the veritable ocean, I think that if Rilke's other sort of happiness is to consider, then it looks a little like Blake's struggle for it. As well, I will not cease from mental fight, forward slash nor shall my sword sleep in my hand, from Jerusalem. Both Emerson and Whitman believed that whatever mood a person has, that it comes from one's beholding. In nature, Emerson said, nature always wears the colors of the spirit, while Whitman's poem There Was a Child Went Forth tackles the notion that what you see, you are, there was a child went forth every day, forward slash and the first object he looked upon, that object he became, forward slash, and that object became part of him for the day or a certain part forward slash of the day, forward slash or for many years or stretching cycles of years, the mirroring of happiness, I like to think, is when one can see a variety of differing perspectives and opinions, but Samuel Johnson thought we do not have time to weigh each one without having need for guidance for our happiness by those wiser than us, you know said the prince, how little my life has made me acquainted with diversity of opinions, it will be too long to hear the arguments on both sides, you, that have considered them, tell me the result. Samuel Johnson From Rasselas, Prince of Abyssinia I don't go to a synagogue, yet I feel close to my angels enough that that counts for something. I am never alone because I am with them. My group has its spiritual purpose as well as its family, companionship and work. Hillel said, separate not thyself from the congregation, trust not in thyself until the day of thy death. Judge not thy neighbor until thou art come into his place, and say not anything which cannot be understood at once, in the hope that it will be understood in the end, from the sayings of the fathers. Nietzsche was one who wished not people to misunderstand him. I would say he was more of a loner. Since he already seems to have made up his mind in the impossibility of angels. Wagner for him was once a sort of human angel, or Wagner's music was, but Nietzsche separated from Wagner, and it as he did most others. I place this point of view first and foremost, Wagner's art is diseased. The problems he sets on the stage are all concerned with hysteria, the convulsiveness of his emotions, his overexcited sensitiveness. His taste which demands ever sharper condimentation, his erraticness which he togged out to look like. Principles, and, last but not least, his choice of heroes and heroines, considered as physiological types. A hospital ward, the whole represents a morbid picture, of this there can be no doubt. Nietzsche, from the case of Wagner. I think Nietzsche would have been more tolerant of democratic communities if he himself didn't make up his mind so quickly to criticize those of the group. Angel Aura with me. What Frank Bedart says about the soul brings to me some lines of Plotinus from the section The Soul. Obeys fate only when evil in his needs, in the third book, where Plotinus says, when the soul acts conformably to right reason, she acts freely. Otherwise, she is tangled up in her deeds, and she is 
rather passive than active, of obeying, I think of Adam and Eve with their own marriage which Marianne Moore speaks of in her poem, Marriage when she says of marriage requiring public promises of one's intention forward slash to fulfill a private obligation forward slash I wonder what Adam and Eve forward slash think of it by this time, I would like to say that the soul in contemplation of its possible finitude is like marriage, which has a potential itself for failure, but with the right action to preserve it, the soul and marriage have no limits even beyond death. Thomas Hardy speaks about change, but if it be true, as Comte argued, that advance is never in a straight line, but in a looped orbit, we may, in the aforesaid ominous moving backward, be doing it poor. Mio Sorta, drawing back for a spring. From his preface to late lyrics and earlier. In his A Preface to a Dictionary of the English Language, Samuel Johnson remarks, Change, says Hooker, is not made without inconvenience, even from worse to better. Rat, in the Wind in the Willows, by Kenneth Graham, suffered a change in order to get to a stage where he could begin his work as poetry. Presently the tactful moles slipped away and returned with a pencil and a few half-sheets of paper, which he placed on the table at his friend's elbow. It's quite a long time since you did any poetry, he remarked. You might have a try at it this evening. Instead of, well, brooding over things so much, I've an idea that you'll feel a lot better when you've got Something jotted down, if it's only just the rhymes from the Wayfarer's All chapter. Yet, not all change is advancement, nor is all work progress. Leo Tolstoy says of slavery in his chapter Attitude of Men of the Present Day to War in his book, The Kingdom of God is Within You, slavery was opposed to all the moral principles advocated by Plato and Aristotle, yet neither of them saw that, because to renounce slavery would have meant the breakup of the life they were living. We see the same thing in our modern world. Angel Jennifer with me. Ophelia tease in my memory locked, forward slash and you yourself shall keep the key of it. And, if pain is, as Nietzsche says, associated with the memory, I think of Caliban, who always remembered that Prospero was his master until he quested freedom. Caliban thou dost me yet but little hurt, thou wilt anon, I know it by thy trembling, now Prosper works upon thee. And, the fear and trembling of Caliban's body is not unlike any body's. For when exposed to the elements, any body, master, slave, servant or king is vulnerable. King Lear the body's delicate, the tempest in my mind forward slash doth from my senses take all. Feeling else forward slash save what beats there. And, to fight off pain, one way is to feel bodily comforts. Both men and women need to be comforted, sometimes by one another, Shakespeare from Sonnet XLI and when. A woman woos, what woman's son forward slash will sourly leave her till she have prevailed and, to conquer one's comforts, at least for a little while, is to conquer the world, a world which unless we learn to cope with its elements, we will be victims of it. Sometimes comfort of one person combined with the comforts of another are enough to make a new person to come into our world. Or if not, our comforts are privately made, and cannot continue from person to person. Shakespeare from Sonnet 9 The world will be thy widow and still weep forward slash that thou no form of theest left behind. Angel Ariel with me.